Take a look at our one-on-one -on -one in the backcourts. Truly some good ones, and this guy is the best in the A-10 a year ago. Outstanding. He is in any conversation that's a legitimate conversation for National Player of the Year to Holloway. Playing a true point guard spot this year, he is hard to guard, as well as John Jenkins. 20 points a game. He leads the SEC in scoring. He's also making four three-point shots a game. 23 and white will be a focus of this savior defense all night long. Lions and Holloway, that veteran backcourt with Wells, Walker, and then Big Kenny Freeze at 7 foot, 275 pounds in the pivot. For the Commodores of Vanderbilt, we mentioned Festus Azili still out with an injury after the suspension, but Steve Chingang takes his spot with Goldburn, Taylor, Jenkins, and Tinsley in the backcourt for Kevin Stallings as he's got his team wrapped around him on the end zone bench area, which is so unique. Xavier came in here today for their shoot-around, and their coach, Chris Mack, was saying, you know what? Do I have a coach's box that extends all the way up to midcourt? Because we're supposed to have a place we can walk around. Nope, you got to stay right where you are, Chris. In his third season, A-10 Coach of the Year last season after a great playing career and five seasons as an assistant to Sean Miller on the staff at Xavier. So this ought to be fun. John Jenkins, 20 points a game. 20 points a game last year when he hit 100 threes. And two Holloway showing his true colors just came over and gave Jimmy and I a fist bump as if to say, here we go. He is one of the better leaders in college basketball this season. He is the complete package at that guard position. John Cow, Mike Kitts, Tracy Woods, and our officials. And Brad Tinsley's got it in the front court for Vanderbilt. Jane Gang feeds it down low. Goldburn in the paint. Got it. Brad Goldburn is a high percentage guy. Over 50% from the field. They go right at the freshman, Desmond Wells. You get an idea of the first possession of what Vanderbilt's thinking. Who is their weakest defender on film? They think it might be Desmond Wells. They go right at him. And Goldburn caps off a three-point play. Great start for Vanderbilt. The question for Vanderbilt so far this season, can they guard the ball, can they get stops, and not turn it over? Holloway guarded by Jenkins. Freeze trying to set a pick, and he'll turn the other way from that. Jenkins kind of iced the on-ball action, forcing Holloway to go down. Here's Freeze on the outside. Got it. The big fella knocks it down. Goldberg picks up his dribble. Lions tight on Tinsley, who tried to drive inside. Lions and Holloway can really get after you defensively. What I like about this combo, Lions plays the two-guard offensively, but he checks the opponent's point guard. And you flip-flop the assignment with Holloway going from running the point on offense to guarding the two on defense. Here's Walker. He's going to take it from the free throw line. He should know this gym pretty well. Played here four years. And he knocks down the outside jumper. And Xavier's got its first lead. And he backs off of Walker and gives him the 12-footer. He makes him pay early. Good rebound by Freeze. Clears it out. And now Holloway's going to take a three. It comes to the big fella on the rebound. And he goes right back up with it. Brad, he's the key to this ball club, Kenny Freeze. You know what you're going to get out of the other positions? Kenny Freeze holds the key for this club come March. He had a good game against Georgia, led in both scoring and rebounding, 12 points, 9 boards, as they took care of Georgia in their last outing. So this is their second straight matchup against an SEC opponent. Goldburn comes up short. Bandy's had a turnover and two missed shots in their last three trips. And on the runner, Wells and... Kevin Stallings might be thinking about a time out here pretty soon. Going to let him play. Trailing by five after being up 3-0. So, eight straight points for the Musketeers. 60 to 70 percent of Vanderbilt's offense is that right there. Yep, that'll help. Brad, they, they, they pass and screen away and curl into jump shots as well as anybody in the SEC. And you have to take that away from them. John Jenkins, 21st three-pointer of this early season. Lions on a fadeaway. Jenkins will clear it. 
Tinsley in traffic, a little bit out of control. More than a little bit. Kevin Stallings told us today, turnovers has been one of the key issues so far. And they've got a couple now in the last four trips down court. And, and Brad, Xavier is going to force some turnovers over a 40-minute ball game. You can't have unforced turnovers like Tinsley had to add on to it. That's the second on Tinsley, turnover that is. Look at him back off of Walker. He hit the last one. He's going to dump it inside to freeze. Reverse layup, he's fouled by Chingang. That is the concern guarding Andre Walker. He's not going to beat you scoring, so you back off of him like that. It does give him the ability, though, begin, begin a very good passer. And Freeze is a load. He's a legitimate 7 feet, 275 pound guy. And I will say this if Festus Azili is playing for Vanderbilt, that pass doesn't get completed. That's a good point. What Kenny Freeze doesn't do or hasn't done so well this year early is hit free throws. He is 3 of 11 so far on the season. A big Festus on the bench. Kevin Stalling told you and I today maybe, maybe a couple of weeks before they get him back. Yeah. How big is that loss? He's the best pro prospect in the building tonight. And that's saying something. Festus, six-game suspension early, but the knee injury as well will keep him out another week or two. Now, this is a guy that he is a pressure release against pressure defense because you can throw in the ball inside with a big body, terrific hands. You see his numbers. When he gets back, then Vanderbilt is a legitimate top 15 team. Until then, they're not. And he draws fouls big time. He shot 216 free throws last year. That's a good move by Goldberg. He's got five early. And we're tied for the first time. And we got an offensive foul on Freeze. Mike Hitt says, I don't want to hear about it. Freeze picks up his first. Travis Taylor is going to check in for Xavier. Here's the foul. Well, Brad, I, I like the fact that he's trying to establish deep post position. Coward's post up about two steps off the block. This guy's not a coward. <laughs> but he got that uh, left arm extended a little too much, and the official was right on top of it. He comes out. Taylor comes in to take his spot. Tinsley for three. And Chin Gang stepped on the baseline after getting the rebound. Good hustle by Chin Gang, but he ran out of real estate under the hoop. D. Davis is going to come into the lineup in the backcourt for Xavier and give to Holloway a quick breather. I would expect uh, Davis to be in the ball game until the next dead ball, which is the TV timeout. So you're trying to give to Holloway a couple of extra minutes right now. There's Xavier's first turnover. Now Taylor and Jenkins run together. Taylor will flush it. Vandy back in front. Terrific control of his size and speed. His ability to jump, stop, and explode is impressive. Nice backdoor pass by Davis. Wrap around, layup doesn't go, but the flush does by Travis Taylor. Xavier averaged 72 points a game last year, partner. They are better offensively this year with the likes of Taylor, Desmond Wells, Redford, the three-point specialist, back after an injury. This is a team that can really score. Got a lot more options this year in scoring other than just relying on Holloway. D. Davis picks up his first foul. Andre Walker returning to Nashville in a different color uniform. We'll talk more about it when we come back. Of college basketball is brought to you by Toyota and Radio Shack. Radio Shack has what you need to make the holidays so right. Tied at 10 here in Nashville. 15-15 remaining in the first half. We're talking about Andre Walker. He's in grad school at Xavier. There he is, three-year letter winner here at Vanderbilt. We're in the Commodore's uniform. Undergraduate degree in May of 2011. Career numbers of four points and three and a half rebounds a game for Kevin Stallings. But it's that rare opportunity where you can go somewhere else after you've already graduated. And if you have eligibility left, and he did, 
I think the best example of that's probably in the history of sports is Russell Wilson at Wisconsin this year playing football. Yeah. But this guy is an example in basketball. So his teammates met him when they arrived last night. A bunch of guys waiting out there to greet him uh, when Xavier got off the bus, which is nice. I'm sure he appreciated that. He's a key guy. He really, he's a blender is what he is, which is what you want sometimes when you just have one year and you're bringing in a new piece to a good team. He gave a very thorough scouting report, as you would expect, right. about these Vanderbilt guys. <laughs> Goldburn, tough catch underneath. And Lance Goldburn has been big so far. Seven points for him. Holloway coming back the other way, and he draws a foul. Jenkins and Henderson both there. It's going to be Henderson that will pick up the personal. Brad, again, you cannot let Vanderbilt get curl cuts uh, on their offense. And that, that's when they really do damage. And there you see tight curl. The defender guarding the screener is the key guy right now for Xavier. That's the guy that's going to hold this defense together against that curling action of Vanderbilt. He must show and discourage that curl cut. Holloway, 87% free throw shooter last year, 83 so far this season. For the senior out of Hempstead, New York. Had a finger problem on a shooting hand that he suffered in practice before the Georgia game and has kind of hampered his shooting, especially from three-point range. Jenkins gets the pass on the baseline and a foul as Kedron Johnson, the freshman, is going to go to the free throw line. Vanderbilt is very sharp, alert, and crisp early in this ball game against a defensive team that likes to heat you up. What do you do against heat and against pressure? You have pressure releases. This time, it's a backdoor cut, and the freshman Brad does a good job of taking his defender one step higher on the floor, getting him to bite, bam, and then a rim cut. And here's the freshman out of Lewisburg, Tennessee, was Class 2A Mr. Basketball in the state of Tennessee. And a lot of people wanted his services. Florida, Louisville, Memphis, Alabama. And here at Vanderbilt, he's got his first two points of this game. And he's given his team a three-point lead. Well, speaking of Louisville, I've got Vanderbilt at Louisville Friday night on ESPN in the Big East SEC Challenge, and that will be a ball game. I'm going to have to watch that one, partner. Jenkins way out. And here's Walker <laughs> bringing it up on the dribble. Nice entry pass, too. And off the glass, good-looking hook by Travis Taylor. Taylor's got four. Brad, you have to know that he's going to go left shoulder, and you also have to know that you can't let the guy come down and get a deep post touch on you that early. And Vanderbilt turns it over again. Now, Jimmy was talking about great matchups this week. We've got a Big Ten ACC challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods for you. 7.30, Maryland and Illinois. And then Duke and Ohio State, two of the top four teams in the country. ESPN, Big Ten ACC challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Coming up tomorrow night. I know that top 25 doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but Duke should be the number one team in the country. They're ranked fourth. You look at the wins that Duke has against Belmont, Michigan State, Davidson, Tennessee, Michigan, Kansas. None of the team in the top five has those quality wins, and Duke right now would get my number one vote overall. Kentucky moved into that number one spot, by the way, today by virtue of North Carolina's loss to UNLV. Freeze. Double teamed on the pass. Good job on the double team defensively by the Commodores to force the turnover. Goldburn's going up with it. He's feeling it right now, but he doesn't get it from three-point land. Nice. Oh, nice drive. Travis Taylor, the transfer from Monmouth. I think that's, six. Brad, that's one of the areas Freeze has really improved over last season. The double team is attracted to him, and now he can also beat you as a passer. Great feel by Freeze. Goldberg working against Taylor off the glass. That is a tough shot. Wow. Goldberg's almost done his average already. Nine for Lance, the senior out of Brooklyn. Rebound underneath by Chin Gang. And Goldburn is pushed on the baseline by Taylor. 
That'll be two on Taylor. You see Kevin Stallings with that famous whistle, and those whistles yes. from far into the court <laughs> mean something all the time. Let's talk about Kenny Freeze's ability to beat you as a passer. Hold it. Boom, right there. Freeze it on Freeze. <laughs> There's the rim cut. And, boy, that is so well done. Freeze knew exactly where the defense help came from, and he went right to that spot with the pass. I knew you were going to get that in in the first five yeah, minutes too or so. Easy. Yeah. Here he is again, the big fella backing in. Again, Chin Gang cuts him off. He almost threw it away. They haven't had to worry about the shot clock at all tonight. Lyon's going to force his shot. It's stuffed by Taylor. If he can track it down, he finally finds the handle. He'll leave it on the outside jumper. Won't go for Johnson. Kind of a wasted turnover and opportunity right there. The only thing that I have a question mark about Xavier's guard, Holloway and Lyons are both only six feet tall. And that size can cause him a little bit of trouble at times. Freeze trying to muscle down a rebound. He finally found a handle and just pushed it out to Holloway. Holloway scoreless so far. Same for Lyons. So the backcourt being held in check by Vanderbilt to this point anyway. And now another Xavier turnover as he bounced it on the baseline. Vandy at home. One point lead. 11-18 first half. The update here, Louisville taking on Long Beach State, team that beat Pitt earlier this year. Three-point of air from Smith drops, and Louisville on its home floor up by five. Louisville and Vanderbilt play each other on Friday. Here, Jimmy Dykes talk about that. Florida all over Stetson. Florida also in a game Friday night. They'll take on Syracuse. With Andy Katz, we'll talk about all those games and teams at the half. All right, Carl, we'll see you guys at halftime. 11-18 remaining in the half. Vanderbilt by one. Man, look at this last turnover that gets called by Mike Kitts on the baseline right there. That ball never went out of bounds. His foot never went out of bounds. And at the officiating clinic that I went to a couple of summers ago, they talked about how difficult that call is. And to make sure as an official, you keep depth. And that ball, the ball was never close to going out of bounds. The feet never went out of bounds. And as an official, you have to stay off that baseline or you, sometimes that becomes a guess of a call. You know what's part of the problem with the keeping depth on the baseline here? The, the bench, bench is right, right there. there. Your yeah. coach is standing right in your way. The yeah. kids are right behind you. Fuller in the lineup. Kyle Fuller, a sophomore, playing in the backcourt now for Vanderbilt. Picked up by Holloway on the baseline. Ten on the shot clock. Taylor got a pick from Sheen Gang. Somebody's going to have to put one up here. It'll be Taylor. Missed the outside jumper over Freeze. And then in the mix, an offensive foul on Sheen Gang. So wasn't the greatest looking possession ever for the Commodores. No, well, the offense looks different when Jenkins is on the bench. And Kenny Freeze did a terrific job in a late clock situation, Brad, as a big, having to come out, take on an on-ball screening action, hedge it. And this guy now, he, he's mobile. He moves. Suspended early this year, and the suspension was basically a week of, I need to get your attention. And I think it has. Yep. Sat out 10 days or was out of there 10 days. He is a massive presence in the middle for the Musketeers. We mentioned he's all of 275 pounds and a seven-foot frame. Henderson's trying to stay with him. Henderson's as tall but not nearly as big, so there's a double team. And with it, they force a jump ball, possession arrow. It'll stay with Xavier. Wednesday night, Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Florida State and Michigan State will get together. Then a dandy, Wisconsin and North Carolina. Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods on ESPN, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com Wednesday night. With Jimmy Dykes, Brad Nestler with you at Memorial Gym, Nashville, the Commodores of Vanderbilt with a one-point lead over the visiting Musketeers until that, pat, that shot by Holloway drops his first basket, and Xavier's back in front. The ability to just go get you one. The great teams have it. Again, John Jenkins, the leading scorer in the SEC on the bench right now. Up, 
Tinsley, their veteran point guard, trying to pack it inside to Henderson. He works against Freeze and goes baseline with a jump hook. Holloway with a rebound. All the way. Got a second chance. Not even close. Henderson will clear it off to Tinsley. Lance Goldburn, leading scorer right now. The rest of the team has only seven. Oh, boy. There's that's a hack uh, and a half. That's flagrant one. Absolutely. Now that's not... An honest play defensively on the ball. That's a wrap around. That's a wrap up. And that's a flagrant one. Boom. John Powell right on top of it. I mean, Freeze makes two mistakes. Bad position to start with, compounded by a mental mistake with a foul. Those are the plays that you have to eliminate if you're Kenny Freeze as a senior. That sends Josh Henderson, the redshirt freshman, out of Roanoke, Virginia, to the free throw line, coming off a career high game. And their win over Monmouth, he had 10 points and five rebounds. And he'll go to the free throw line for only the eighth time this year. And kind of talk that one in. It'll be free throws in possession for Vanderbilt. So momentarily tied back up at 17. T2 Holloway went over to Kenny Freeze. Brought him down. Talked him for about 10 Ooh. or 15 seconds. Now he just said something to the crowd as he walked to the bench. That, that, that right there is a leader. And to Holloway, I've seen him do that against Miami of Ohio. Brad, this is a guy that really takes his teammates, and he, he's a coach now. Holloway is on the floor. And Freeze needs to get himself together. Freeze needs to chill. <laughs> Here's Taylor on a runner. Andy out of bounds on the baseline. Tinsley way off the mark. And now the outlet. Great pass. And there's a pretty tough foul as well. And now Xavier's going to go to the free throw line as Desmond Wells will go. The difference is this foul is going to be a hard foul on the ball right there. It got, it got close now, but that one's more trying to play the ball than Kenny Freeze was. Wells is a stud. You look at this guy's arms for a true freshman. He is a hoss at 6'5", 215. He is a future star in the A-10. Out of Raleigh, North Carolina, Hargrave Military Academy. Free throws have been the problem, a really bad problem for Xavier so far this year. Not for this guy, though. Wells with four, and Xavier back in front by two. Goldburn checks back in for Vanderbilt during that set of free throws. Here he is, leading scorer for Vandy right now. Taylor's been quiet. He'll try three. Off the mark. Lions will bring it up. He and Holloway together. And now Taylor with a push. Vanderbilt's got to get John Jenkins back in the game. I mean, offensively, they're a different-looking ball team when 23 is on the floor, and there he comes. He puts pressure on you like no one else can from that Vanderbilt team. His Lions underneath goes against Henderson, the biggest guy on the floor for Vanderbilt. And the cleanup is by Jeff Robinson. Xavier with its biggest lead. Jenkins turn around, jumper short. Got it back. Another try, still short. Mm. Walker almost stole it from his former teammate. Jenkins gets a good look this time. I got it. 
Three shots by Jenkins in one possession. He's going to make you pay. Second three-pointer for John Jenkins. Lions up and under. Nice drive by the little guy, but it didn't drop. Taylor off the pass. He'll go to the free throw line. That John Jenkins has stamina and strength to be chased and to not get tired. On that release right there, everything lines up clinic 101. Basketball doubleheader. Tonight, a win would be Billy Donovan's 400th of his career, 365th at Florida. Irving Walker from about five point range, and this one is now a 20 point game midway through the first. Louisville all over Long Beach State, a tough game. They're winning 35 19. West Virginia struggling this year. They are up on Akron. Andy Katz joins me at the half. Here at Vanderbilt, what to watch for? How about tomorrow night at 9.30? Duke, Ohio State. Jared Sullinger, what an amazing young man he is. And Duke, 11-1 all-time in the challenge. Should be a good one, Jimmy. I think you got outstanding guard tandems there from Duke. Seth Curry and Austin Rivers are, are terrific. And they're getting better defensively. What that ball club has done so far, I think, like I said earlier, deserving of a number one ranking. Aaron Kraft at Ohio State defensively as good as anybody I've seen. You partner him up with William Buford, and you got you got a loaded backcourt going head to head in that ball game. Taylor got both free throws. Vandy five out of six from the stripe tonight. That free throw line's been killing them this year so far in the early going too. But tonight, not so in the first half. They're back in front by one. Lions thought about a long three, got on his tiptoes. Fans wanted an up and down travel, but he kept his footing. And now it's Holloway with five to shoot. Lions will get his man in the air and take the outside jumper and got it. Oh, what a ball fake, huh? A shot fake by Lions. And it's legit because this guy's knocking down you know, 42% or higher from three point line. You've got to go out after him. And it is their leading score, just under 18 a game. Taylor, nice pass to Goldburn inside. Boy, Goldburn's been a big factor on the interior, but he's had some nice dishes from his teammates. Taylor leads him in assists right now. Yeah, he does. Making plays. Had 19 assists coming in, and another beauty there to Goldburn. Here's Walker off balance, and going to have an offensive foul, I think, on Jeff Robinson. Well, the play by Taylor... He's a strong right-handed driver, can only go left a couple of bounces, but he has become a playmaker, and he attracts defense to him, but now his eyes are really staying up like a lead guard, and this guy is legitimate 6'8", with a lot of pop around the rim. The biggest story in this game to me right now, Brad, is Vanderbilt's ability to defend Holloway and Lyons. Exactly. Those two guys are having a lot of trouble shaking free and getting, you know, getting space to operate on the offensive end. They each have one field goal. Holloway's got one free throw, so only five points between the two. Tinsley goes out. And Kedron Johnson, the freshman, comes back in. And Goldburn at the free throw line. He's short on that one. Kept alive by Taylor. Throws it up there and in. They got a gift there. And Mandy back in front by three. Vanderbilt ball out of bounds. Brad, the, the, the length of Vanderbilt is bothering the two small guards for Xavier. As good as they are, that's the only question mark I have about how they hold up in March. The length right now bothering them in this game. And they bring in Davis, and he's another six-foot guard. Here's Taylor on the outside. Jeffrey Taylor's first three of the night. It's a six-point advantage all of a sudden for the Commodores. Nice pick and roll. Walker had it blocked, though, by Goldberg. Second chance blocked as well by Taylor. Their old teammate getting mishandled by the Commodores' defense.
I don't, I don't know if that was the best defensive possession by Vanderbilt this season, but it was the toughest. And Taylor, only a 23% shooter coming into this ball game. He was around 33% last year. Makes him hard to guard. This is the toughness and the fight and the moxie that Vanderbilt hasn't had up till now. A little run by Vanderbilt there, not only showing their defensive prowess, as Jimmy said, but Taylor knocking down a three. They've shot their free throws pretty well, and now they've got a six-point lead. That's their biggest advantage by either team tonight. Fred, Vanderbilt's only loss of the season I was here on a Sunday afternoon when Cleveland State came into this building and put it on Vanderbilt. And for 40 minutes, they were the aggressor. They were tough. They had an edge about them and a confidence about them on the defensive end. I'm not so sure Vanderbilt didn't learn a lot in that ball game to take forward. Jenkins had his shot blocked underneath by Robinson. And on the other end, three won't go. Goldberg the rebound. You asked Kevin Stone today, who's the toughest team you played this year? He thought for about a minute before he finally said Cleveland State. Cleveland he said State. not that they had individual talent like maybe NC State or some of the other teams we played, but they're veterans and they play hard and they never give up. And that's the only blemish on Vanderbilt's record this year. Now that's a team right now that deserves to be ranked in the top 25, Cleveland State. They went at Vandy, they went at Kent State, they have a loss to Hofstra, but deserve to be ranking just outside of it right now, around 27th or 8th. Walker trips by Kedron Johnson. And still, maybe you're not on a bonus. Walker off the inbound. Hey, can't go to the free throw line. Knock it off the glass. Good shot by Walker. And he works it around perimeter. Jenkins, a quick release. Didn't get as good a look or square up as well as he'd like to. Here's Robinson from the elbow. Offensive rebound with a second chance. Won't go by Justin Martin either. And back comes Johnson for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is a pass and screen away and curl team. Holloway. Second chance won't go by Walker. Neither will the third by Davis. And Vandy's right. got the rebound. Wow. Playing volleyball above the rim and nothing would drop. Taylor. Odom for three. Both teams right now dragging just a little bit. Yep. We approach three minutes in the half. And to me, this is the time that you'd like for Holloway to, you know, go make a play for you. He's the best one that they have. He runs around a series of picks on the baseline and now gets it back out on top. Problem is he's being guarded by Jeffrey Taylor at 6'8". Yeah. Maybe the best defender in the SEC. Two to shoot. Going to have to hurry. And Taylor forced a turnover. Here's a breakaway by Jenkins. Everybody just sort of standing around as the shot clock expired. Buzzer went off. Ball was free. Outlet to Jenkins. Easy slam on the other end. That play doesn't stop until the officials recognize it with a whistle. And they felt like Vanderbilt had possession of the basketball before the shot clock. And Xavier just not alert. Vandy a 14 to 4 run in the last five minutes. And now Xavier with a turnover. 31 25, six point advantage for the Commodores. The size of Vanderbilt is causing the small guards of Xavier trouble. That time it was 6 8 Jeffrey Taylor, and the three point specialist gets a third grade layup. ACC, Big East, SEC. All sorts of big games coming up this week featuring top teams. We'll look at those teams and talk about what Andy Katz hopes to see from them and the latest on the Bernie Fine firing at Syracuse University, what the police and district attorney are doing today. That's coming up at the half.
Carl talking about the SEC, the ACC, the Big Ten. Well, it's pretty much packed. Kentucky now number one with Ohio State number two. Syracuse, Duke, and North Carolina rounding out the top five. Wisconsin playing North Carolina coming up later this week. Number five against number seven. Well, Ohio State has one guy that no one else has in Sullinger. Kentucky has a guy that no one else has in Anthony Davis. Duke has a, a starting five with size and guards that, again, they're deserving of the number one ranking. They're just not there. Now, that was a great steal by Lyons, just kind of a lazy dribble by Kedron Johnson. He's going to find out you can't do that in the SEC or the A-10 for that matter, whatever. An easy basket for Mark Lyons. Cuts the lead to four. Brad, I don't think Xavier in the first half will be pleased with their consistency in guarding the curling action of Vanderbilt. And Chris Mack talked about it time and time again today in the shoot-around that we have to take that action away. Make Vanderbilt go to something that they don't want to go to. If we let them curl and catch and curl and catch into shots, we are in trouble. And Vanderbilt's got enough of those right now to have a five-point lead. Adrian Johnson, that lazy dribble of his, got him a seat on the Vanderbilt bench as Tinsley comes back in. Taylor misses the second free throw. Five-point game with 145 and a half. Xavier is the gold standard of the A-10. Six straight NCAA tournaments. One or shared that the regular season crown five straight years. 15-1 and one last year as the regular season champions before losing to Marquette in the NCAA tournament. And I say that because this is an older team that they haven't played well in the first half, but they will not go away easy. Taylor, three on one, leaves it for Tinsley, back to Taylor. And the two seniors run down together for Vanderbilt. Well, Brad, that was a slow break by Vanderbilt. I mean, that was a medium speed break, and Xavier wasn't there to, with a number. And he had the number advantage after missing that shot on the inside. They just didn't get back. They're not getting back right now either. Henderson. I mean, Fandy really testing how hard Xavier wants to run from offense to defense right now. Remember, this is Xavier's first foray on the road this year after a 4 0 start. And they're finding out that it's a little bit different. On your opponent's home floor. Vandy continues to down the action on the on-ball screen. Ice it, down it, whatever. They're not letting the ball come to the middle third of the floor. Five on the shot clock, and a jumper goes for Justin Martin, his first basket. That was a big one. Makes it a five-point game. Vandy will have the last shot with ten seconds to play in the half. Kinsley almost an offensive foul. And now he's going to lean in, and he's going to have his shot blocked. Goldberg, second chance. Vandy can't capitalize, but they do have the halftime lead. Jeffrey Taylor, 10 points in the last seven minutes and change. 12 points for him. Goldburn's got 11. So some of the guys on the inside giving Xavier a little bit of trouble. Four ties, eight lead changes. Vandy ends on a 17-8 run, and they've got the halftime lead as we go to Carl and Andy in the studio. Welcome you to our College Hoops Halftime Studios. Hi, Andy. Uh, you have Hello, Carl. How are you? Dealing with Vanderbilt. I'm doing very well. Uh, they got a couple of runs in this first half. Uh, what does Gene Stallings say about his team? Well, Kevin Stallings Kevin's has said, there. sorry, Kevin Stallings has said from the get-go that this was going to be a monster week for the Commodores because they've got this game at home against Xavier, and then on Friday as part of the SEC Big East Challenge, they go to Louisville. They also, later in the month, uh, we're going to have to go to Marquette, so another Big East game that's part of a separate deal. But Kevin Stallings had circled this week as certainly one of the more important weeks in their non-conference. They came off winning the Legends Classic with tough, gritty wins over NC State and Oregon State, learning how to finish games. That's something they couldn't do last season. Now, the one player they don't have is Festus Azili. He's still out with a knee injury. He already was ineligible for a while because of an NCAA violation. But learning how to win and close games is an important thing that Vanderbilt did earlier this week, earlier this month, and now they're starting to do here in the first half against Xavier. What did he tell you would be the reason they were able to close games? 
their defense, something that was not good in late game situations last year. They were to do in close out when I saw it firsthand against NC State and Oregon State. And already here, the latter part of the first half, we're seeing that against Xavier, able to extend the lead. Now the key for them, because Xavier's got another run in them, right. is can they keep Xavier at bay? We'll see. Five points at the break. Taylor's got 10. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Infinity. Luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. And Jared, the Gallery of Jewelry, with five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. Vandy leading 34-29 at the half. we got a huge week of college basketball. The Illini take on Maryland, part of the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Duke is unbeaten. You heard Jimmy Dykes say they could be a number one team in the country. You're looking at a four versus two. That's Tuesday, 9.30 Eastern time. Everybody healthy in this game, and we got ourselves a good one at the half. Vandy up 34 29, Jenkins and Taylor, the difference. Vanderbilt leading by five, 34-29. Knowing Kevin Stallings as well as you and I do, I think he would be happy with his defensive team performance in that first half. Goldburn's a guy that kind of kept a minute, but then Jeffrey Taylor took over in the last seven minutes or so. The best defensive half that Vanderbilt's had this season against a good Xavier ball club. Right. Vanderbilt came in allowing 47% from the field. Offensively, it's been... Jeffrey Taylor taking the ball to the rim. Everything he's done, he's been going towards the basket, so he's been aggressive in this ball game. As a scorer, as a passer, one time he caught it on the wing and jumped up and shot it, but everything else, Brad, he has been under control with his size and with his speed, which makes him hard to guard. The question now I have in this ball game, can Xavier uh, have an answer for what this guy's doing offensively with their two guards? You look at his touches, his passes. About one out of every three right now, Jeffrey Taylor on the touch is getting the shot up on the rim. Here he is around a pick to open up the second half, but they bring it back out to Goldburn, and he'll take the three. Rattled it in and out. Goldburn had 11, Taylor 12, Jenkins 8. So 31 of the 34 came from those guys. Lions and Holloway come in combined 27 points per game. In the first half, they only had 7. Can 52 and 10 get Xavier back in this ballgame? Reeves who sat a good chunk of the first half after having a flagrant foul called him on him. And his coach trying to cool him down. Here he is off the shot to open up the second half. Now he really hurt his team, Brad, in the first half with that flagrant one and only playing eight minutes. He, he's a difference maker with his size and his ability to score. Vandy's seventh turnover of the night. So Xavier just one trip down court from evening this thing up again. Should they hit a three or find a way to score three? And that's something they haven't done so far tonight. They were 0 for 5 outside the arc in the first half. Here's Freeze. And he'll go to the free throw line. Chin Gang. He'll pick up his third foul, and that's pretty big for Vanderbilt. Team gang with a little bit of foul situation now. Here's Xavier scoring coming in. Four guys in double figures for the season, and tonight nobody there yet. Because of the defensive size on the perimeter that Vanderbilt can put on Lions and Holloway, this guy at the free throw stripe may end up being the leading scorer. If Xavier's going to win this ball game. Well, you got to have a big guy that can shoot free throws if he's going to make a lot of trips there. And right now he is 3 for 13 on this young season from the line. That's not good. And he's going to get fouled a lot. And you want your post guy, at least I do, to get 30% of his points on the year from the free throw strike. He's not even close to that right now. Goldburn drives. Bam! Again, a five-point margin. And then Jenkins with great defense, but he sent it right back into Holloway. Yeah, they're going to get it anyway. Chin Gang with a steal. Ahead to Jenkins. Around, freeze, got it.
Vandy matches its biggest lead. Chris Mack has seen enough. Timeout. Later. Vanderbilt defensively, Brad. They continue to bottle up Holloway and Lions with their size on the perimeter. Freeze has foul trouble, so he can't foul. Vanderbilt off and running. Vandy's matched its biggest lead up 7, 17-42 remaining in the ballgame. Brett, I like the play by Steve Chingang a couple of possessions ago as the post guy. He's going to see where his defender is. Right there is free. So he sees his guy, and then he's going to seal him. I see you. Bam. Now I got you. And that just opens up the drive baseline. Credit that basket to Chingang for finding his guy. Where's my guy? See your guy. Now seal him and open up that drive lane. Terrific job by 33. Wells, Holloway, Walker, Freeze, and Lions are starting five on the floor for the Musketeers, and they need some offense. Shot only 34% from the floor in the first half. Part of that due to the Vanderbilt defense, and part their own miscues. And here's Team Gang with the rebound off another miss. Now, where's Brad Redford in this game? I mean, he's a three-point specialist for Xavier that... Hasn't got a minute of playing time. Chang Gang knocks down a three. Speaking of threes, his first basket. Ten-point lead. He's, he's not a traditional five. He's a trailer five that can knock down threes. And working on a Chang Gang <laughs> just got it done. Holloway rips one. That's his first of the night from outside the arc. If you're A-10 player of the year and in that conversation for national player of the year, Two Holloway has to take over this ball game for a four or five minute stretch. Oh, and he just took over on a steal and a layup. Five straight points for Holloway. He's too tough. He's too competitive. Too much pride in how he plays and the X factor involved with his program to go away. And he just personally kept Xavier in the ball game because Vandy up 10. They could have started to run away with it. He cut that lead in half in about 20 seconds. Tinsley weaving his way through traffic. will kick it out. Goldburn, another three. The big guys for Vanderbilt can shoot. Freeze inside. Short on one. I don't know if he was planning on stuffing it, but he didn't get enough elevation. That's for sure. And he'll hear about that the rest of the night now. Nice. Great pass to Taylor from Tinsley. Vanderbilt right now playing a complete game, but there's still 15 minutes and more remaining for Xavier to do something about it. That landing by Lions can't be too good. Missed the shot. Now Goldburn on a no-look pass from Tinsley forgot to take the ball with him, or he would have had an easy layup as well. That Brad Tinsley has made terrific plays under control. This is not a guy that's going to beat you with speed, but he has good size and a good feel and good pace to his game. Again, that's a power dribble, not a speed dribble, but an under control play by Tinsley. Well done. Yep. Memphis early, Jimmy, you and I have seen them. You've seen them more than I have, but uh, long and quick and fast. And young. And young. And at times they still play like it, but uh, still a factor and relevant on the national scene this year. All year long will be Memphis. I think we'll see some zone out of Memphis as the season goes forward to protect Tarek Black on the inside. Ajon Parker, a freshman, is in the lineup for the first time tonight for Vanderbilt in that last time out. Well, they are making Xavier work defensively. And he just lost the ball. Holloway going against Jenkins. Spins inside, up and under. He's going to go to the free throw line. So Holloway again with a couple of steals now. And some quick baskets trying to keep Xavier in this thing. Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Illinois and Maryland, 7.30, and then Duke and Ohio State tomorrow night. Those are the matchups for you. 
to Holloway at the free throw line. So he only had three points in the first half, but he's got six here in the opening five minutes of the second half. Reddy values things that only a coach values. I, I think he's fearless. He's tough. His understanding of an on-ball action is terrific. And he's good enough by himself, and his will is strong enough to keep Xavier in this game. It's a different lineup right now for Vandy, without a doubt, including Parker Henderson, the redshirt freshman. And now outside of Jenkins, that was a good outlet pass to your best shooter by the big guy, but Jenkins missed it. Xavier looking to cut into that lead. And they'll get a chance. It'll be a foul on Henderson. That'll be a second. Brad, this is a, I think it's a little bit of a gamble right now. Vanderbilt with Dejon Parker, a freshman, on two Holloway. And, and to me, that's a mismatch, just in terms of experience right. and all the things that Holloway understands. Xavier has a chance to cut into this lead right now. Off the inbounds yeah. play, there goes the three. You were asking, where's this guy been? Redford, 106 of his 113 career field goals, three-pointers, including that one. Jenkins will try to answer and does. Holloway throws one up as he's bumped. Fouled by Fuller. Vanderbilt right now with Fuller and Dejon Parker on the floor. So one of those two has to guard lines, the other one on Holloway. And, and those two guys, good, good players, but they're not ready to match up with what these two guys can do to you. Here's Redford. Just trying to get another look, but Jenkins got on him quickly. Looking to hoist another three, and he continues to run around yeah. screens on the baseline. You got a shooter chasing a shooter over exactly. there, don't you? Exactly. That's weird, isn't it? Hook shots and air ball. Picked up on the backside, though, and the reverse layup's no good. And third chance will send somebody to the free throw line. Fuller picks up his second foul. And that's going to put Travis Taylor at the stripe. Seven out of 15, 47% in the early going of the season through four games. Wasn't a great free throw shooter through the first four. Let's see how he does. He was actually a leading scorer at halftime with six off the bench. Brad, his motor is always in the on position. I mean, this is a kid that averaged 17 points at Monmouth two years ago. What I like about him more than anything right now, he gets one rebound every three minutes that he's on the floor. An offensive rebound is what got him to the free throw stripe. And here comes the most popular guy in Nashville right now, <laughs> Kenny Freeze, back in the game. Out of all the great recording artists in this city, Kenny Freeze, the most popular guy in Nashville. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Second to your guy, huh, Kenny Chesney? Yeah. I, I, you guys got, Vince Gill. I've got an invitation to go watch Vince Gill tonight. How do I turn that thing down? I'll go with you, but I didn't have two football games in the next four days. Henderson. Tipped in. Goldberg's had a big night, and that is a career-high tying 18th point. Boy, Vanderbilt hot on the touch or freeze, making sure he gets rid of that basketball with a double team. Inside, nice drive by Lyons. Strong for his size. And a foul on Parker. Kevin Stallings probably trying to get to the next TV timeout with Taylor and Tinsley on the bench over there. Guys that have really guarded well in this ball game. And with every basket from number 10 or a play by 52, Kevin Stallings looks at that clock and he can't get to that next TV timeout quick enough. Xavier might be having trouble from the free throw line as a team, but Holloway and Lions don't have trouble. And a three-point play by Lions made it a six-point game again. Fuller walks. No, he didn't. Going to say he was pushed. By Freeze. And that's three. Rod Odom's going to check in for Vanderbilt. And Goldburn will get a breather, and he'll get a big round of applause, you can bet. 
The former Commodore Andre Walker comes in and Freeze sits down. And now Chris Mack is going to buy an extra minute or two for Kenny Freeze around the next TV timeout. Jenkins tried to fade away jumper. Holloway stripped it from him. Now Holloway on a one-on-two scores with a left hand. How good a play was that on both ends by Holloway? He, he's terrific. Not a great first half, but he and Lions right now can get you oh back in boy. any ball game. And Lions just knocked down a three. And what a turnaround. It's a one-point game. You know, and Kevin Stallings can't afford to have his defensive guys on the bench. He's coming back with them right now. 8-0 Xavier run. TV timeout will come on the next whistle, but it might be too late. Breakaway, Holloway, blocked, follows, blocked as well, but it's going to be goaltending on the second try. And Xavier's going to go into the break with the lead, believe it or not. They trailed by 10 just minutes ago. It's a mini run to Holloway. Hot hands defensively and strong around the rim. Xavier makes their run. With Vanderbilt backups on the floor. We got a game, partner. Well, it looked like Kevin Stallings' 365th career victory was going to be easy, but not now. Let's take a look at who's next, brought to you by Dodge, Jimmy. Well, I think who's next as far as the next number one pick is Anthony Davis. Numbers aren't outstanding, 13 and 8, but he's, look at that, 71% Brad. He's knocking down from the field right now for Calipari. This kid is terrific. He can do it all. He's an elite talent, and those numbers will continue to grow just like that Kentucky team is going to continue to grow. They're ranked number one right now. You can make a case for it, and they have a high ceiling over the next three months, just like they've always done under Calipari in Lexington. See if Vandy can get there. Composure back after the big 10-0 run. That'll help him. Tinsley, his first basket. Those two guys are as good as anybody in college basketball as far as starting guard combos. It's been Lions and Holloway that has this run going on. Xavier amazingly in front by two. Down by ten just minutes ago. And he can't get caught up in a one-on-one -on -one game right now. Move the defense with your screening action. Taylor, nice drive. Walker rejected it, but Odom was there to clean it up. Lions has been hot. Vanderbilt continues, Brad, to, to ice or down on that on-ball screen action on the side. So now Xavier going to start setting some middle third ball screens. Holloway, fadeaway, missed. And loose ball is going to be Xavier's. I talk about great guard combos in the college game right now. I still love Sh Shabazz Napier and Jeremy Lamb at UConn. Curry and Rivers at Duke, Kraft and Buford at Ohio State. But these guys, Holloway and Lions, are right there with them. The only thing they don't have is maybe that 6'4", 6'5", in that two-guard position. But trust me, Holloway and Lions can play with anybody in the country at those two spots. Well, the reason that this game is tied at the midway point of the second half is because of those two. Lions is going to try one over Tinsley. Rebound. Chin Gang almost knocked it off of Taylor, but Taylor comes up with a loose ball. Right now for Vanderbilt. Make Xavier work on defense. Move that ball side to side. Your screening action and be strong with the ball. Wow. Walker, the former Commodore, goes to the floor for it. Timeout taken as it came to Goldburn. And 9.37 remaining. 55-55. Xavier with a big run right in the thick of it. Brad Nessler and Jimmy Dykes back in Memorial Gym. You don't see games turn around that quickly very often, and it was the backcourt of Xavier that did it. 
on the road. On the road. This is a team with a terrific will, talking about Xavier. Their will to win, their, their toughness, their competitive edge that they bring on the road with them is very impressive. Important ball game for Xavier, Brad. They're not in a power conference. They have a terrific stretch of games right now between November 28th and December the 31st, and they take on Gonzaga. This is the type of game that Xavier at the end of the year is a two or three seed, but they drop down to an eight or nine seed. That's what's at stake right now with 9.32 to go for the visitors. And we know this is a tough place to play. Not many people win here. Non-conference opponents, in fact, have only won one of the last 25 games against Vanderbilt. And now we got another timeout taken on a floor burn. Bandy did one. Xavier got a hold of the ball. They call a timeout. One thing Kevin Stallings, I'm sure, will talk about in his huddle is being strong in the dadgum basketball. Cleveland State took it away from him time and time again. Xavier's starting to do it right now. Tomorrow night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods continue. A couple of games on ESPN, 7.30 Eastern. Maryland and Illinois get together. Then at 9.30, it's a battle of two of the top teams in the country. Jared Sullinger, Ohio State taking on Seth Curry and the Duke Blue Devil. Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods on ESPN, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com tomorrow night. This is the week where perception meets reality. And the reality to me of Vanderbilt is if Festus Azili is healthy and playing for Vanderbilt right now, they are legitimate top 10 team, just like the preseason ranking. Yep. Brett, he's a pro. He's the best pro prospect in this building, and there are some good ones. Holloway, Lyons, Jeffrey Taylor, Jenkins. This guy's the best of all of them. That's how big of a piece Vanderbilt's missing right now. Kevin Stallings was telling us today as Xavier turns it over, the schedule for this year is pretty tough in the early going, and of course, they expected to have Festus Azili. Brad Tinsley misses a three. And Chin Gang, Azili's replacement, trying to run down the rebound, steps on the baseline. Festus Azili got fouled at the third highest rate of anyone in college basketball last year per minute's play. I mean, he's got the shoulders of a pro. He's got the, the work ethic of a pro. And when the pro scouts come through Nashville right now, their eyes go to him quicker than anyone. And as I mentioned, he had 216 free throw attempts last year. And he has numbers. Do they want to take advantage of it? Well, not with Holloway around. And two almost ended up leaping over the top of us. Luckily, brake pads were good. Because if you leap off of this court, you literally leap off of this court. You, you do, and you end up, the folks behind us in row one, which is about three feet below sea level. Yeah, right there we are. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, that's us. And then once again, I feel like a groundhog. You know when a groundhog just pops up and looks around for yeah, a while? Yeah, It's kind of how we are here for two hours. We got Puxitani uh, out on the east, and we got Beauregard down in Georgia <laughs> when they see that nice. groundhog shadow. And... Breeze is going to pick up his fourth foul. I, Brad, I say nice because you, you have to have a pressure release if you're Vanderbilt right now. Festus Azili would be your pressure release. He's over here with jeans on. So you have to do something else. Tinsley has been under control in this game. With a little misdirection. He knew exactly what he was going to do with that basketball. He starts left, reverse pivots with misdirection, and then pass on time, on target. Breeze with four fouls. Taylor at the free throw line where he's three out of four tonight. One of three Vanderbilt players in the 1,000-point club on the floor. And he's well over 1,400 in his career. A senior, 15 points tonight. That's his average, which is seventh best in the SEC. Speaking of the SEC, you and I will cover it all winter long. Kentucky, legitimate Final Four contender. Florida right there behind them. Vanderbilt, Alabama, who I had last night. Mississippi State, five in the top 25, ties for best in the country. Tough run of the boards right now, just trying to get a handle on the ball. It's going to be Xavier out of bounds, trailing by two. I can't wait to Saturday. Purdue at Xavier, my first trip to the home court of X. That is a terrific fan base. Uh-oh, Taylor. Watch, watch out. out. Lions double team 
That last turnover so costly, and it's got the crowd back into it as well. Pick and roll inside. Walker misses. Battle under the boards. He's going to get another chance. Still can't connect. And finally, Gene Gang's going to pick up a foul underneath, and that's four on him. One of the best leapers in the SEC, if not all of college basketball, with a free ride to the rack. Desmond Wells at the free throw line. They mentioned Long Beach State. How about Harvard? Already talked about Cleveland State, St. Louis. Teams outside of the Power Six Conference that are really playing terrific basketball to start the season. Wells almost got his own rebound, but bounced it off his foot and out of bounds. Three-point game. Vandy has four of its starters on the floor. Henderson being the exception. The redshirt freshman. This is where you go to Taylor or Jenkins. You trust those two guys to make a play. Jenkins, 13 points so far. Meanwhile, Goldburn and Taylor each with 18. For Goldburn, matching his career best. Taylor's a driver. Jenkins is a the shot threat. Eight on the shot clock. Jenkins with Holloway out him. And Holloway stripped it again, much like he did a little bit earlier. And Jenkins adds insult to injury by fouling him. Brad, two Holloway is a six-foot, 190-pound point guard. And he's taken on one of the most lethal shooters in college basketball. And Jenkins can't shake him. The hot hands, the quick hands, the ability to defend at a high, high level without fouling. Very impressive. And a one-and-one one now. Xavier in the bonus, Holloway at the free throw line, three out of four tonight. He's got 12 points. Guy that had an opportunity in the summer to try out for the USA Basketball World University games and said, no, I'm going to stay on campus, work out with my teammates so we all can get better. And for the third straight summer, he gets up 20,000 shots in one summer. Wow. He works at it. Like a really good pro works at the game. Vanderbilt has to cut hard. You halfway cut against Xavier, you'll halfway get open. And that ain't good. And there's going to be a foul as Taylor was on his way around Wells. Chris Mack, 94 feet away, trying to communicate. It's hard to do. We mentioned earlier, Kevin Stallings has got a series of whistles. Some of them mean some things that his team can hear on the other end of the floor. He's got it nice. right in front of him now. And another great dish by Taylor. Well designed and well executed out of bounds play. You flatten everybody out. You flash one guy high and lift the defense a little bit. And it's a rim run. Again, Taylor showing why he came in as the top passer on this team. But Lions playing like one right now. 15 Watch the guys off the ball for Vanderbilt. Are they cutting hard? Are their rim cuts with a purpose? Right now, a lot of, a lot of the, you know, it's kind of a two-step going on. you gotta, you got to work hard now. Taylor's got the size advantage in the lane, but he picked up his dribble, and now he's got to get rid of it. Nice. Back to Tinsley, and Tinsley slams it. Not sure I was ever going to say that about Brad. You know what? The, 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 the cut. The cut was on time and on target. Normally, it's a pass. Labor ball out of bounds. They were looking for a foul in the paint and didn't get it. Watch Tinsley. I mean, that's going to be a, a cut that is on time now and on target right to the rim. Well done. And some hops. For <laughs> the senior out of Oregon City. Oregon. Both his baskets have come in this half. The last one giving his team a three-point cushion. We're under six minutes. Remember what Kevin Stalling told us about 3 o'clock this afternoon? The guards for Xavier can control the game late in the ball game. That's what they're up against. Holloway's going to take it over Goldberg. He had to. The shot clock was expiring, and it does expire. The best defensive game that I've seen Vanderbilt this year. 
twice now in person and three times on film. Vanderbilt has defended well. Kinsley with Lions all over him, five second call. Breeze comes back in, playing with four fouls. Part of that's on Tinsley, and part of that is on the offense. I mean, you know that Xavier's going to climb all into the chest and check the breath of Tinsley for the rest of this ball game. The offense now has to bail him out and not leave him hung up. In the loss this year to Cleveland State, Vandy had over 20 turnovers. They've got 14 right now. So they got to be careful with the ball. That was the other thing Kevin told us earlier today. Too many turnovers. Running baseline jumper. Last touch by Xavier on a bounce to Vanderbilt. And Brad, the, the pressure is going to come back on Tinsley right now. And it's going to be Lions. He's got to quickly get this thing into the offense, or Lions is going to heat him up again. A surprise Lions backed off of him. Not backing off Jenkins tonight. At least Holloway's not. Taylor open for a second. Driving on Walker. Lost the ball. I mean, why? Why and where are you going? That's 15 turnovers, and there's still 420 to go. And three turnovers in the last four trips by Vanderbilt has left them in a precarious spot here against Xavier as Walker hits the jumper to cut it to one. One point game with four to go. Jenkins around a screen for three. Got it. His fourth three of the night, and defensively on the other end, knocks it away from Holloway. Timeout. Everybody up. 346 remaining. Vanderbilt, 66. Xavier, 62. Brad, one thing about Jenkins, he is shot ready on the touch. Bam, right there. His feet are set. He caught that basketball, Brad, moving away from the basket, but when he catches it, look at his toes. His toes are at the rim. This kid understands all the small things about being a great shooter. On the catch, the toes are pointed at the rim. They're not pointed at the passer. That's one of the small things that separates average shooters from good shooters and good shooters from great shooters. Jenkins is a great shooter. Closing in on 200 career threes in this, just the early portion of his junior season. He's got 196 threes with the four he's added tonight. His stamina and his strength is impressive because he has been hounded by Holloway in this ball game. But he continues to work hard. Stamina, strength, and stroke, very hard to guard. Jenkins with that three-pointer, his fourth of the night. Giving Bandy a four-point lead with 346 remaining. Partner, it's hard to win a ball game when the opponent has 22 offensive rebounds and they're plus 12 overall. Keep an eye on Xavier's ability to offensive rebound the remaining 342. That might keep them in this ball game. Lions, Taylor chasing him all the way around. The lane and finally fouled him. Taylor second. And so Mark Lyons going to the free throw line. And one and one. 15 for Lyons tonight so far. Had only two points at halftime. Brad now Lyons and Holloway have combined for 29. They came in averaging a combined 27 points. So they're beyond their average, but they've had to work extremely hard. Lions is now 6 out of 17, Holloway 4 out of 14. And again, that size on the perimeter has bothered these two kids just a little bit. Lions, their leading scorer, knocks down the free throw. 
Averaging 17.8 coming into the game. And has 16 right now. Got them both. Two point gain again. They better give Tinsley some help. They are right back to trying to light him up. Tinsley had Goldburn and saw him late. Taylor. Whoops. Oh, and now Vandy yeah. Goldburn had Jenkins going one way, the ball going the other. And their 16th turnover. And that was probably Xavier's best defensive possession of the ball game. They locked in. They were there on the cut of uh, Jenkins because he caught it in the shot pocket. And they were right on top of it. A sniff out by the visitors. Musketeers chance to tie this trip. Jenkins got a piece of that shot. And now Holloway comes right back, but that's going to be a foul on the reach in. Almost swiped one. Yeah, keep an eye on Tinsley in this game. He's the primary ball handler. He's not an explosive blow by. It can really beat you off the bounce with pressure, and the pressure is going to stay hot on this kid. If he doesn't turn it over the remaining 256, Vanderbilt's chances of winning go sky high, but they are going to try to chew him up. But he's a tough competitor. Cheese, uh, Freeze is bleeding over there, so they send in Travis Taylor in his spot. See, now Redford can't light him up like Lions or Holloway can. All right. Taylor again finds himself in no man land in the lane. Jenkins on a runner off the glass. Offensive foul on Jenkins. He's better off the bounce, but he still is a shooter. That's a good job by Lyons to get both feet set. He's outside the restricted area. And Jenkins just one step too many. And now Freeze comes in. Redford sits down as Chris Mack is playing at offense and defense on the substitutions, trying to keep a three-point shooter in there. But a big guy back in there now. You go to freeze. You know I mean? He's gotten a lot of deep post touches in this game. Holloway behind the back. Up and under and blocked. Still going to be Xavier Ball, though. Holloway trying to create underneath against basically a trio of defenders. And a timeout. Partner, this, this, this game is a 10-point bulge for Vanderbilt if Holloway and Lions don't play as well as they have in the second half. Those two guys are not going to go away. Their will to win in the lead guard and the off-guard position is as good as anybody in college basketball. They have had to work, though, for their points tonight. The size of Vanderbilt defensively has bothered these two guys. But their toughness and their edge... And all their leadership that they bring to this floor is why they are right back in this ball game because of what they've done in the second half. Vandy had them bottled up pretty good in the first half. They did. But 24 in the second between the two. And it's a two-point game with 219 left. Partner Chris Mack called a timeout because he knows he has to score on this possession. So he burns one of his remaining two. And something involving freeze inside would be a good idea. Do they go to it? Seven on the shot clock. Winding down. They're working out. Holloway's going to have to take one deep. He didn't get it away. I don't know if they forgot what the shot clock had or just Vanderbilt getting in the way of the quick passes. That was a costly shot clock violation and turnover. You take one of your last two timeouts and you come out and that's what you get. That's not good. Two minutes to play. Taylor hasn't scored in quite a while. 
Gene Gang on a bounce pass. Double team. They work it around to Jenkins for three. In and out. Musketeers have got it back with a chance to tie or lead again with a minute and a half to go. Holloway and Lions, uh, they are the guy, and I understand that. But Kenny Freeze is also a big weapon you could go to right now. Walker lost it. Two big turnovers the last couple of trips. And Kevin Stalling, Brad, has three timeouts. If he doesn't like what he sees, he can call one at any time right there in the ear of that baseline official. And now Lions with a foul on Tinsley. Only the fifth team foul, I believe, on Xavier. Yep. They have another one to give. Understanding that, Vanderbilt has to cover up that basketball right now with the strength of a running back because you know the hot hands and the aggressiveness is going to come right on top of you. Breeze goes out. Justin Martin, a freshman, comes in for him. Goldburn to inbound. Going to lob it in to Gene Gang. A minute. Now to play. Installing is right by that baseline official. He can call a timeout if Vanderbilt gets hung up. And a whistle and a foul on Martin. Brad, that's a good job by Goldborn. He's a he's a he's a power forward guy, but they bring him out on the floor and they trust his handle. He was very strong with a sweep of the basketball, which forced the foul call. It, it's not going to show up in the stat book at all. That was a major play that Goldberg just made to protect that ball. And now Vandy's going to be shooting free throws on the next Xavier foul. Wednesday night, Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. 7.30 Florida State takes on Michigan State. Then a dandy. Seventh ranked Wisconsin, number five, North Carolina at 9.30. Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods on ESPN, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com. Well, if you've been watching ESPN2 tonight, you know we've had a dandy of a basketball game. 45 seconds to play. Vanderbilt had a two-point lead. Can they hang on to it? Well, they're tough enough. I don't think they were tough enough maybe two, just two weeks ago, but they have toughened up since I was here last time when Cleveland State just hit them in the nose and they didn't respond well. They've hit themselves tonight. Right. They've known punches themselves tonight very well. Uh, this is an important week for Vanderbilt. Xavier tonight at Louisville on Friday. Power teams. A schedule built to have Festus Azili, who's not on the floor. Is Vanderbilt tough enough without their best player to finish this thing off? If they do, Vanderbilt is a team that's built to go deep in March. They can prove it tonight and Friday at Louisville. They would put them at 6-1. and one. Yeah, They would probably move back up in the rankings depending on how the rest of the week goes. Xavier's Musketeers trying to avoid losing for the first time this year. But their first trip on the road, and they know it's a tough one. There's about a nine-second difference in the shot clock and the game clock. Tinsley, seven to shoot. Jenkins forces one up there, doesn't go. Walker's got the rebound. Chance to tie or lead. Lyon spins and scores. High game. Six and a half to go. Timeout Vanderbilt. Oh, man. Hey, Mike, 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 Mike. Kevin Stallings saying, I want a full timeout. How about this spinning shot by Lions around Tinsley? Brad, that's why he is also in the running for A-10 Player of the Year. I mean, that's just a I've got to go score mentality and move out of Mark Lyons. And Vanderbilt had a chance to close them out on the other end, but Xavier really locked in, man. And it was a good hard curl by Jenkins, but they were right there on the touch and forced Jenkins into a tough two. Then they ran down the rebound. And Port 3, remember, is a made field goal, so Vanderbilt has some room to run on that baseline down there. It's a... You talked about what Vanderbilt's coming up. You've got Purdue and Xavier... This weekend. That partner is a stretch. Ooh, man, that partner, Cincy, ORU, favored in their league. Long Beach State giving Louisville all they want tonight. The Diamond Head Classic, Gonzaga. Not even on that graphic. They go to Memphis later on in the year. 
This is a Xavier team that they come through that thing and unblemished or only one or two. That's the kind of resume you want if you're the A-10 champion at the end of the year that says we're a two or three seed. They've won eight of their last nine against SEC competition, including a 14-point win in their last game over Georgia. Now can they do it to Vanderbilt as well? Brad, you cannot have a turnover right now, Vanderbilt. You better be sure of where this ball's going and how you want to get it up the floor. Tinsley with five. Tinsley on the drive, and it's stripped away. Goldburn throws it up, and it almost went in. And we're going into overtime. Goldburn somehow found the handle on that loose ball. Got it up off the window, but too strong. And it's overtime. Well, they trust Tinsley. Oh, what I like Brad Tinsley did, Brad, he kept the ball in the middle third of the floor, which is where you want to be in a late clock, late game situation to take away the, the double team and the, and the crowding problem on the sidelines. I think that's a big statement from Kevin Stallings that I want to get the ball to Tinsley and trust him. Tight ball game, and a future pro has to watch in the form of Festus Azili. Going to overtime, Xavier and Vanderbilt tied at 66. Vandy went the last three minutes, 56 seconds of regulation without scoring a point, and that's why they find themselves in the situation they're in. But you know what? A year ago, they would have lost this ball game in regulation because they weren't tough enough defensively and rebounding-wise to hang in a ball game like this. They lost ball games last year, Brad, the last three or four minutes because they couldn't make those tough plays. Kevin Stalling's team has been just as tough as Chris Mack's team. And both of them register high in my eyes tonight in that strength and, and, and durability and perseverance and moxie and edge level. Vanderbilt was not built to win a game like this last year. Now they are. Now we'll see if John Jenkins and company can match what Holloway and Lyons, the backcourt for Xavier, has done in the second half to get them to this extra period. On the next team foul by Xavier, Vanderbilt will be at the free throw strike. That also played in because they could be very aggressive to close out that regulation. And moving around the perimeter is Goldburn, who had the strong first half. Throws up a shot. Gene Gang looked like he had his hands on the rebound. It looked like he was looking at his coach, and he lost the ball. And there was a lot of contact on Goldborn's shot attempt. And Lyons slips, guarded by Taylor. Both teams in the overtime get an extra timeout. They both have two. Holloway crossover oh. dribble was strong, but Goldburn took it away from him and then stepped on the baseline. <laughs> wow, that was quick. <laughs> the ability of Holloway. Watch this. The change went right, right there. And that ball never got above his knees, partner. I call it a crossover. It wasn't. It was the same hand. He just took a left. And this is a drive waiting to happen with a short clock. Lions three. And Xavier gets it out of bounds. The, the uh, Vandy fans looking for an over the back on Desmond Wells. Battling for the rebound. Xavier's offensive rebounding percentage in this ballgame is going to be around 44-45%. That's extremely high. Wells on the drive on the baseline. The fouls on Chin Gang, and that's five. Chin Gang, Vanderbilt loses their inside presence, or at least part of it. And now that ability of Xavier on the offensive boards becomes even more magnified. Depending on what Kevin Stallings and his guys come with. Could it be Henderson, the redshirt freshman? 6'11. Now, this kid for Xavier, Desmond Wells, he's a double figure scorer as a true freshman. 
He is that three-position guy that can really go score for you that Xavier has lacked the last couple of years. He's been held check tonight, but this is a bona fide future all-conference player. And he's given his team two-point lead in overtime. This is Jenkins and Taylor's time. Can they get him open? Tinsley found a little avenue, but he lost the ball going up, and it's off of him. The turnover bugaboo again against Vanderbilt. 18. Off his knee. Good call. Game that Vanderbilt led by five at halftime, 66 apiece at the end of regulation. Xavier by two here now, almost two minutes into the overtime. Guard the ball. Can Vanderbilt guard the ball in this overtime period? Holloway's going to take a three and got it. Oh, man. How tough is he now? I'm telling you. I'll put him up against anyone in the country in that lead guard position. You can talk about Scott Machado and his ability. I own it as a passer. Kendall Marshall, his throw-ahead ability. Aaron Kraft defensively. Jordan Taylor at Wisconsin. This guy right here is right there in any conversation as far as a lead guard and what he does for his ball club. The three, the smile, his will to win is off the charts. A five points, Xavier Lee. 3.02 remaining in overtime. Holloway with 17, Lions with 19. The backcourt for the Musketeers have taken over in the second half. And what was once a 10-point Vandy lead five minutes into the second half, now they find themselves five points down, and they haven't scored in six minutes. And they still haven't. Jenkins missed a three. Three o'clock this afternoon up in Coach Stallings' office, he looked at you and I and he said, I'm concerned about Holloway and Lions, their ability to control the game late in a game. They have. Have they ever? Here's one half of it. Looking for a pick from Walker. He'll take the long ball and oh. got another one. Oh, the courage of 52 in blue. Big time. Up eight. Jenkins trying to answer. Two point shot for Jenkins. May not be enough unless they can come up with a stop. Or if they can stop number 52. He's hit back-to-back -back threes. Jenkins on him. Got a pick from Walker. Thought he was going to fade away and take another one over Goldberg. He might. He will. He's short. And Tinsley with a rebound. Now that was a force. He probably wishes he had that one back. Jenkins, inside move, layup. Jenkins, back-to-back -back buckets. Brad, the decision by Holloway, probably the only one that you would take back over the last six or seven minutes because he's graded out at A-plus. But the bad decision in the force has opened the door for Vanderbilt back in this game. That was over Jenkins. That gave him the lead. Then he came down, got a pick from Walker, and went over Goldburn for another one. Uh, Goldburn had lazy hands. The hands were down, and hands down, man down is how Two Holloway looks at it. The eyes of an assassin, the eyes of a leader right there. I go back to a game earlier this year against Miami of Ohio. Two straight possessions. Desmond Wells, the young freshman for Xavier, allowed his guy to score. And you watch it on tape. Hugh Holloway goes right to him in the flow of the ball game and grabs him by the back of the neck. And in about three or four words, gets his attention. And he leads and values things as a coaching staff as well as anyone I've seen this year in college basketball. A minute 34 remaining in overtime. Vanderbilt, thanks to John Jenkins, back-to-back -back baskets to give him 20 for the night, which is on his average. Back to within four. And now some full-court pressure. Walker having a little trouble getting it in. Got it to Holloway, and he almost traveled. 
Mandy, no timeouts left. They're going to have to play this thing out. Foul on Goldberg. Well, that was talked about, I'm sure, in the timeout. Because as soon as Travis Taylor got that basketball, it was an automatic foul. 46% free throw shooter. So Vanderbilt's playing the dice right now. Yep. They got it in the right guy's hands, they think. One for two tonight. Two for three tonight. Ten points for the junior. Odds tell you he's going to miss the second one. And then you got a two-possession game, although even if he hits it, it's a two-possession game. If you can knock down some threes, and he's going to make Vandy earn it all. That's what's wrong with gambling. Sometimes it pays, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Tinsley, triple. Nope. Got his man to run by him, but he wasn't squared up and didn't get a great look. Uh, they're going to have to foul again. If not, these guards for Xavier just handle the ball and control it. And there's the foul on Jenkins. He thought he was going to maybe be able to swipe a pass there or swipe a dribble, I should say. And it's going to send Holloway to the free throw line where he is five out of six tonight. He's the kind of guy that uh, you've heard me talk about this in the past. Some guys get fouled in this situation. They're a little hesitant. As soon as he gets fouled, he thinks, you just fouled the wrong dude. I'm going to make you pay. Did on that one. Yeah, these are two good ball teams now. Vanderbilt went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a legitimate top 15 team without their best player, Festus Azili. And so impressed with the tenacity and the toughness and the inner strength of Xavier on the road. You saw that graphic. Free throw shooting's been a problem for Xavier, but tonight they had it in the right hands of the two guys that know how to hit him. And now an eight-point lead, 45 seconds to go. And it would take a miraculous comeback by Vandy not to lose for only the second time in the last 26 non-conference home games. Brad, the clamp-down ability defensively of Xavier is what ultimately is going to win in this game. As Vanderbilt went the last 356 of regulation without a made right basket. Right. They were lighting up the basketball on Brad Tinsley, taking away his vision. Vanderbilt not able to make the hard cuts and get the clean looks. The things you have to do on the road, the things you have to do in March, Xavier showed to me tonight. Defensive stops and tough baskets in crunch time. Five minutes into the second half, Vandy led by 10. 45 seconds remaining in the overtime. Xavier leads by 10. And the Musketeers on their way to back-to-back -back wins over SEC opponents Georgia and Vanderbilt. And this will be their ninth win in the last 10 outings against SEC teams, in fact. Wow, what a win. This is a tough place to play basketball, no matter who you are. This is pretty impressive. Brad, any conversation you hear going forward about the best point guards in college basketball, if they don't mention to Holloway, they've missed it. Yep. This kid is legit. Two-time A-10 player of the year, and he will be in the conversation for national player of the year, trust me, when this thing's all said and done. A lot of respect between those two. Ironically enough, a former Commodore, Andre Walker, has got the ball in hand as the game ends in overtime. A 12-point Xavier victory. That didn't seem possible about 10 minutes ago, I'll tell you that much.